mean, the Christian faith is all about Jesus. That's what it's all about. And, and, and uh, um, it's anchored in the belief that in spite of our rebellion, okay, um, from the one who created us and planted us here on this earth, okay, um, that he loved us so much that he sent Jesus into the world and, 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 um, to save us from our pathetic state and from our doomed destiny. And that, that's, the, that's the core message right there. And, 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 uh, and there's a well-known summary of that that's recorded for us in John 3.16. A lot of you probably have heard that verse before. If you, go ahead and say it with me if you'd like. For God so loved the world okay, that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but will have eternal life. In the 1970s and 80s, there was a guy who um, everyone knew as Rainbow Man. Does anybody remember Rainbow Man? You have to be a, a person of a certain age, I, mean, I hate to break the news, to remember Rainbow Man. But he wanted to get the good news out. And he, he was really responsible in a lot of ways for John 3.16 becoming... I can remember my dad and I watching sports. My dad was like, we got to figure out what does that mean? John 3.16. That was before Google. So you had to search for the family Bible. <laughs> you know, <laughs> to figure out where it, where it was and stuff. But this was Rainbow Man right here. Okay, Rain, Rainbow Man. That's why he's Rainbow Man, right? The wig... <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> kind of a '70s thing, right there, huh? <laughs> so, and um, but he, in many ways, popularized popularized that verse, and 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 uh, and he became a major fixture at at, at at major sporting events. Okay, and and and. Uh, he, his wig, his sign, okay, um, it would appear on TV. He was always in like these premium seats at these major sporting events. And people would say, there he is, there he is. He would all of a sudden just pop up. You didn't see him the whole game. And all of a sudden, there he is, Rainbow Man. You know, and, and uh, um, he, it, it, I, I looked it up. He was just under the nets at the 1977 NBA Finals. He was seated behind the plate at the 1979 Major League All-Star Game. Um, he was in the winner's pit at the 1982 Indy 500. Okay, the, the broadcasters and the producers would deliberately try to avoid showing him on camera. Okay, and, and, uh, um, but he would just show up like at Augusta National. You know, Nicholson would be, or Nicholas, I mean, would be, would be like hitting this critical shot, and all of a sudden there he is, you know, behind the trap or something like that. You know, and, and uh, um, you know, he'd be behind NFL goalposts and all that kind of stuff. And, it turns out this guy had no money, okay? He was actually homeless for a while when he was, had his, all his popularity going and stuff. And it's believed that he got his premium seats by, by, and travel paid for by Christians who wanted to support what he was doing, you know? And, and he was famous for getting the word out about God's love. And, and he ended up in a Budweiser commercial Okay, he, a Saturday Night Live did a skit where Christopher Walken played him. Um, um, the Moscow police arrested him at the 1980 Olympics. Okay, and, and, uh, um, and then late in the 1980s, his prophetic messaging started to change. And it, and it went from a fun, positive message of what God loved and, and to a message about what he believed God hated. Okay, and, and, and he believed that there were things going on that were just absolutely repulsive to God. And, and so to dramatize this, um, he conducted a, a bunch of stink bomb attacks because God was like, whoa, what you're doing, man? Okay, who you are, okay? He set off stink bombs at the American Music Awards. The Orange County Register newspaper got a stink bomb attack. Um, Trinity Broadcast ne Network facilities got it. Um, Robert Schuller's Crystal Cathedral, okay? Um, and to say God thinks this stuff stinks, okay? And this, so this messenger of God's love, this message of God's love evolved into a different kind of messaging. And, and it started out as this positive message of that God so loved the world, okay, um, that he gave, right, became this negative message of says, well, what you're doing, man, it stinks. As a matter of fact, you stink, okay? That became his message. And here's a life principle, okay? Here's a life principle. 
When Johnny has a problem with everyone, the problem is with Johnny. Yeah? That's a life principle. You know people like that, right? They got a problem with everybody, okay? And well, what's the problem? It's not with everybody. It's with Johnny, right? You know, and, and, uh, and it turned out that the problem was Rainbow Man, okay? This messenger of God's love um, uh, for his fallen world, it turns out he didn't understand much about love at all, okay? Rainbow Man's real name was Roland Stewart, okay? He was married four times, okay? He choked out one of his wives because she didn't stand in the right spot with the John 3.16 sign and didn't get in the camera. So, you stood in the wrong spot, you know. <laughs> in 1992, he was arrested after a standoff in a Los Angeles hotel room. Um, and during the standoff, he threatened to shoot at airplanes coming into LAX. And what did he do to block out the windows and stuff? He put John 316 signs all over the windows of the hotel room. No lie, okay. And, and he was charged with eight felonies, including three kidnapping charges. Um, he later rejected a, a, a plea offer of 12 years for his charges. Instead, though, I'm going to trial, okay? So he went to trial and was convicted of all the charges, and he's now currently serving three consecutive life sentences. He's coming for patrol, parole a whole bunch of times. As, as late as 2020, he's been denied every single time. So it's, it's kind of like, it turns into this pathetic story. I had such fond memories of Rainbow Man, you know? And, and, uh, um, and, and, uh, but it's a pathetic story, and at its core, it, it misses and misrepresents, if you know the totality of the story, of what John 3.16 actually means, right? And so what do these words mean? This is what I want to talk about today. What do these words mean? That God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever would believe in him, and this gift that, he was, that we were given, okay, would, wouldn't perish, but would instead have the hope of eternal life. Now, I've got to give you kind of a technical backdrop a little bit, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do an inadequate job, and I don't want to spend a whole bunch of time doing this, okay, this morning. But we have to talk about something called a theological concept that's, taught, that's in the scriptures that is pretty much impossible to understand, but yet Christians believe it's true, because it's, the evidence is there, and it's this concept of the Trinity. Have you heard of the Trinity before? Okay, the Trinity is, is this idea that God is, is, is manifest in three persons, and yet he is one. Okay, and, and, and it's, it's a mystery. Our brains can't get wrapped around it. Okay, how can God be three, and yet actually, in essence, one? Okay, and, 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 and that's the backdrop of that passage. There's a theologian named R.C. Sproul that put it this way, and, and he's getting kind of practical about it. He says, our redemption, this, this idea that we get, we get the hope of heaven, okay, that we get redeemed from this, from this world that he cashes us out, okay, and, and brings us back in, um, it is the work of all three aspects of these, these three persons of God, okay? And it's, it's, it was planned by the Father, it was accomplished by the Son, okay? And it's applied to our lives by the Holy Spirit, okay? It, it, if you look at the creation account, you see that all three personalities of, of, the God, of the Godhead were involved in the creation. In the same way, all three were involved in the redemption of his good creation and, and to fix it and stuff. And, 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 and the Father is the one who initiates, okay, the plan, Okay, that this is what we're going to do. It's the son who's given the assignment to go in there and do the job. And then it's the Holy Spirit's job to apply this to each individual life. And there's complete unity in this. There's like this eternal agreement within God that this is what we're going to do. Now, I know that's kind of like, wow, right? Did you track all that? Okay, but it's important that, you, that I at least say something about that because the idea is the Father is the one who sends, John three sixteen. The Son is the one who goes, right, and the and the the Holy Spirit throughout time and history now has been applying this work and giving people the the grace they need to be able to respond to God's good gift. Okay, and 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 um, 
and the, the, son, the, the Father sent the Son into the world, okay, and the Son was absolutely glad to go fulfill the assignment. It was love that motivated the coming of the second person, okay, of what we call the Trinity, because we're, we don't know how else to express this, tri-unity, okay? And, and, and to go into the creation and to accomplish what was necessary to secure the redemption of God's good creation. So love was the animating force. It was the driving force. And, and what I want to talk about is, I want to think through a little bit, what was love willing to do? What, what practically was required for Jesus to express God's love to us? And, and, and what did it mean for the Son to come into our world and do this deed. And, and, and what it involved was a, was a series of voluntary demotions. That's what it involved. And, and it involved the son, for, what, it, what it involved for the son to enter the world that he made, okay? What was involved in that? Well, it's explained for us in Philippians chapter 2 by the Apostle Paul. And, 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 and when and Paul expresses this, what this meant for him to come, um, what our loving God was willing to do on our behalf, okay? He also, pra he also gives us practical application of this to our lives. That, that he, what he's going to say is, is that the Son coming into the world gives us a practical example of how to love each other how we're supposed to do this thing, okay? And, you know, is, is, it whole, is love holding up signs about love? Not always, right? But what is love? And, and, and Paul says this in Philippians chapter 2, starting verse 3. He says, here it is. Here's what love looks like. It, it has nothing to do with selfish ambition or vain conceit, okay? Not, it's not about making yourself look good, but in humility, considering others better than yourselves. Imagine how radical the world would be if people walked around doing that. It's not about me, man. It's about you. I want to elevate you and stuff. I want to bring you up. I don't want to bring... I don't, I don't, I'm not interested in promoting myself. And each of you, it says, should, should look not only to your own interests, but also what's best for the people around you. Those are radical ideas, radical worlds that would, that, would, that, would, that would transform our world, right? And he says this. This is where he connects it to the sun coming into the world. He said, your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who, being the very nature of God, okay, did not consider equality with God a thing to be held on to or to be grasped. He said, when the assignment came, the Father is going to send the Son into the world. He said, I'll do it. I'll go. I'm not going to hold on to what I've got here. And I'm going to go into that mess of a world so that we can bring it back to the original state that we want it to be in. And so, being very nature of God, he did not consider equality with God a thing to be held on to, but instead he made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a human being, and not only just a human being, but also a serving human being. And being found in appearance as a man, just like us, okay, okay, he humbled himself and be, not only came in and served, but he also was obedient to the task that was before him, with the job he had to do of redemption, that he humbled himself to the point of being willing to die on our behalf. Even to the point of, it, it goes even worse, not only death, but death on a torturous cross. This is the example of love. God so loved the world that the Father said, go down there. Let's do this. Okay? Go in there. Don't stay up here and hold on to what we have here. I'm, and he's, Father, I'm willing to go. I will go, I'm putting this in very human terms, obviously, but the idea is, is that we're going to go down, I'm going to go down there, and I'm going I'm to humble myself, I'm going to enter in, I'm going to become one of them, and I'm going to take all kinds of abuse, 
but I'm going to serve. I'm going to express love. I'm going to speak truth. I'm going to stand up for what's right. And in the end, I'm not only going to serve, but I'm, I'm willing to die. And, and, and not only die, but die a torturous death on a cross so that your love and our love can be fully expressed in this world. This is what it's going to mean. So it's this like staircase of descent, right? You know, it's, it's like he's in heaven and he comes to earth and he becomes one of us. And he becomes not just one of us, but a serving one of us. One that's going to serve everyone. And he's not only going to serve, but he's also being going to be willing to die. And not only just an ordinary run-of-the-mill death, but a torturous death on a cross. That that is love. That's love. That willingness to forgo whatever it is that you want to hold on to and be willing to enter into somebody else's pain and, 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 and help them in their situation. And, and so you, that, that idea of a stair step, I think, is the right idea. But here's the thing. That first step is a Lulu. Okay, coming from heaven into this place? Wow. You know, it's like, be careful, that first step, you know, is a big one. You know, and, and, and so the scale is kind of wacky, you know, and, and because that first step down is bigger than any of us can actually imagine, I think. You know, that it's, it's kind of hard to comprehend, okay? You know, the, the Bible speaks of, this, of, of the presence of God, we'll call it heaven, okay, as this place of unimaginable beauty. You know, the, the sights, the sounds, the smells, the, the splendors of heaven is what Jesus knew from all eternity past, right? And, 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 and then he said, I'll go. And think about this. Think about the Christmas story, right? He woke up as a little baby, you know, so to speak. And somehow, in that, in that little child that came out of Mary's womb, okay, somehow there's, you have 100% man and 100% God. Don't ask me to explain how that could be, okay? That's just what the scriptures teach. That's called a mystery. That's something that we can't fully grasp and understand. And so when he wake, where did he wake up? Remember this Christmas story? Where was it? A manger, which means what? Like a barn, a stable, right? Or something like that. And so you go from the splendors of heaven, the sights, the sounds, and all this kind of stuff, and what do you go into? That ammonia kind of smell, maybe? I don't know. You know, and, and, uh, um, you know, and, and, and worse, right? The, the sounds... You know, I don't know what was there, you know, but, but it's, it, it's a real wake-up call going from where he came from, right? And, and in heaven, the scriptures talks about like these legions of angels, right? And, and hovering over the throne and, and, you know, holy, 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 worthy is the lamb and all this kind of stuff. And there's none like you. Comes to planet earth and you got, you know, cows, donkeys, I don't know, a few people standing around, you know, and... and in heaven, you had perfect relationships, perfect unity, perfect harmony. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, uninterrupted state of capital L love, right? And, and, and on earth, you know, you're, you're in a, a, a feeding trough, right? Is that the mommy, right? You know, or something like that. I don't know exactly how that word, the dada, you know. And, and, uh, um, and the scriptures speak, you know, they tell us that Jesus, when he was in heaven, and this, is, this goes back to the creation account. He just spoke. And with a word, things are created. Unimaginable power. Okay, And, you're, and the, the, the story, if you really play it out, you come, he comes into the world as not only a baby, but a dependent child at that, at that point of development on his 100% human, human side. right? And so what is he, what, what's required? What, is he, what does he need from his mom and dad? He needs food, right? He needs, he needs the change to happen, right? And, you know, and 100% and, uh, um, man, dependent on his diapers being changed and being fed on a, on a reasonable schedule, right? I mean, talk about a shock to the system, you know, and, and it, that, that's a big demotion. That first step is a big one. And, and, but they were only be, just beginning, you know, because Jesus is going to find out what it's like to be one of us. The scriptures talk about this, that he can sympathize with us in our weaknesses, 
Why? Because he's experienced all of our weaknesses, yet he did it successfully. He didn't fail like we do. He, but he knows about temptations, which means he knows about how to deal with bullies and pretty girls. And, and, and he knows how to deal with all the stuff, all the temptations that we face, and all the hardships we face. And, yet, and so he understands. Now God himself understands what it's like to be us. And they teach us that we can turn to him in our time of need, in our hunger, in our exhaustion and stuff. And so he came not only as a human being, but he also came as a Jewish human being, okay? Which also meant that he was going to be someone that's going to know discrimination and, and, and what it's like to be put down. And, and during that time, it was, it was from some of these outside forces that had come in and were occupying the land. And worse than that, he was also going to be a Galilean, okay? Which means he's a hick. Which means he probably had some kind of little accent that was a tell, okay? And, and which means it's kind of like, you know, some of you people. I don't know. You know, depending on where you are from. You know, and, and, uh, you know, and people, you open your mouth and, whoa, you know, where are you from, man? You know, you're not from around these parts, are you? You know, and, and, uh, um, and, and they were kind of looked down upon. And he comes in, and think about this. God himself enters the creation, and he comes in as a servant, not only in one of the ways he served, was he came in as a teacher, okay? He came in to explain. It says that the Word became flesh, okay, and got in John's account, and made his dwelling among us, okay? This is the incarnation, him taking God concarnate, coming into us, okay? Coming into our world. We've seen his glory, and he's, he reflects the glory of God himself. No man has seen God at any time, but now he's dwelled among us, and it says in John 1, 18, it says, and Jesus has explained this invisible God to us. He came as a teacher. And, and, and up in heaven, he's recognized as a full-fledged member of the Godhead, if you will, okay? The Trinity, right? And, and, and everyone's saying, we adore you. You're amazing and stuff. Down on planet Earth, he comes in. And what kind of stuff does he get from the religious leaders? He starts like correcting some of their misunderstandings and their misperceptions and, and how they're leading some people down the wrong path um, by wrong ideas. And he comes in and starts correcting them and they're rolling their eyes at him, right? What do you know what you're talking about, rabbi? You know, what do you know? They don't know who he is. And yet he kept teaching. He, 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 they'd say, you don't know what you're talking about. Get out of here. And yet he would just keep teaching, keep teaching, because he was revealing God himself to the people that he loved. And, 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 and then he, he, another way he served was, was, was by actually getting down and dirty with people, okay? And, and, and he entered into people's illnesses and diseases and, 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 and their, their trials and tribulations and stuff. He doesn't just take upon himself human flesh and, and, and kind of do the pass by. He enters into our pain. He becomes a serving person. And, 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 uh, and, and Paul says, your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus who is by the very nature God, but did not consider equality with that position to be something to be held on to, but instead he made himself nothing, and he took upon himself the form of a servant. You'd think the Creator coming into the earth, there'd be certain perks and benefits that would come with that, right? And he didn't, he didn't take that. And so here's what he did right before he went to that death. It's recorded for us in John 13, and, 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 and it, says, it says that Jesus knew that the time had come for him to go back to the Father, for him to leave this world. In other words, he was going to do that deed of death. And, and, and having loved the people he was with, it says this in John 13. It says, now he's going to show them the full extent of his love. Now he's going to show them what love really looks like and how much he really loves them. It says the evening meal was being served and the devil had already prompted Judas, okay, uh, to betray him, okay? And it says that Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and now he was going to return to God. And so he got up from the meal 
and he took off his outer clothes, okay, and, and, uh, and he wrapped a towel around his waist. And, and then, and after that, he poured water into a basin and, and began to wash. God himself takes upon it, he kneels down on the floor and begins to wash the dirt off of his disciples' feet, drying them with this towel that he had had wrapped around him. And, 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 and then he told Peter, he said, get over here, I'm going to do you too. And he's like, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? I don't think so. I don't think so. And Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I'm doing, but later you're going to get it. I'm setting an example for you to follow. The second person of the Trinity, okay, washing and drying the feet of those that he had made. And, and, and he and Peter and, and Jesus have this exchange, and finally Peter agrees to let him do it. And it says in verse 12, when he had finished washing their feet, he put his clothes back on, returned to his place, and he said, do you understand what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right so, rightly so, for that is what I am. Um, now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I mean, have you seen the feet of people of a certain age? <laughs> It can be like ugly, okay? And he's saying, I, I'm saying that this is love. I've given you an example, and you should do what I'm doing as well. Be willing to enter into that. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor is the messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Because my ways are always right, and oh, by the way, they're also good for you, right? And, and so this God man becomes a serving man. He doesn't just come in for a couple of months and stuff and do this flyby, but then he submits himself to death and he agrees to death. And being found in appearance of man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, but not just any death, even death on a cross. That was the most awful form of execution. I promise you the ACLU would not put up with it. There's no way we, we could ever go back to that, right? You know, and, and, uh, and, 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 but here's this person that they love and respect, these followers of his, and they watch him, the, the table gets turned on him, and they put him up on this cross, and, and he was tormented, he was tortured, okay? He was beaten savagely, he was hung up there, and while he hung there, with nails through his wrists and through his feet, he was ridiculed by people. And, 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 and they watched him bleed, they watched him choke, and, 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 and if, if that was someone you loved, they'd be like, wow, right? But now, you're, if, you, if you put it in the whole context, you have the second person of the Trinity, okay? God himself hung up there by the ones that he made who has only known adoration from eternity and he takes all these demotions and now he's spread eagle on this cross and, and beaten wearing a crown of thorns and, 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 and he's bleeding and he's voluntarily dying. He didn't put him up there. He put himself up there. Because he knew that's what he had to do. And, and see, we have no concept of what these demotions were like, okay? No concept of the space between heaven and Calvary, right? I mean, it's just so immense, you know, and, and, and uh, the space between heaven and Calvary, but what it's filled with is, is, is love and servanthood. That's what's in there. That's what it's filled with. And, 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 um, the sacrificial love, and as a result of what he did, the way Paul wraps up this, this section of Philippians, he says this, and it's, it goes right perfectly with that song we just sang, that, that as a result, God honored him and gave him a name that is above every name. Okay, That at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. At the end of the day, that's what's going to happen. Okay, at the end of the day, it's going to be universally recognized 
what God did for us, whether people chose to accept that or not, and that every tongue will have to say it. Someday is going to confess that what Jesus did authenticated the fact that he was truly Lord. Okay, and so the path to greatness, church, is not through domination. It's not through fighting cultural wars. It's not through, you know, political activism and all this kind of stuff. Let's be engaged in those processes. No problem. Man. I'm way engaged in that personally in a lot of ways. Very civically engaged, okay? But the path to greatness is downhill. The real path to greatness is downhill. And the, and the way we express God's love is through service, by suffering demotions, by being willing to sacrifice. That's the example that's been given. And, and, and that, that is the path to greatness. And, and that is, the path to greatness is not media gimmicks, okay? It's not wearing a wig and holding up a sign and saying, yeah, I did the work of God today. And you failed, lady. You, know, you didn't stand in the right spot. <laughs> really? You know, and, and uh, no, it's putting into play the values that Jesus taught us. That's, that's it. That's it. That, 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 it, it, here's, here's another way, thinking about the stink bomb attacks. It's not saying you stink, you know. No, it's, it's, it's amazing. God loves even stinky me and you. I mean, can you believe it? It's so amazing that he loves a stinky guy like me. Believe me, ask my wife. I can be pretty stinky, you know. And, and, uh, um, and, and um, so what does it mean? What are these values? And this is the way we've been packaging them around here. What does it mean to show that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him would not perish, but he have eternal life? Well, it's by practicing acceptance, by accepting one another. Why? Because God accepted a stinker like me, right? I mean, come on, you know. You know, none of us are in first-rate condition, okay? We don't have any right to blame and say, oh, you're the enemy. It's like, no, I'm the enemy, man. It's like, he accepted me, so I, I'm going to accept you. I, I have no right to judge your starting point. Please don't judge mine. But let's just do this. It's amazing. The God of the universe entered the creation on our, because he loved us and stuff. And that's why Romans 15 says we accept one another just as Christ has accepted us. Okay, so that God will be given the glory. What does it mean? We show compassion, right? You know, we, we, why we show compassion? Because we've received compassion. We didn't deserve it. We love one another. Why? Because he first loved us. So we have to love, pass that love on. Jesus said, just as I have loved you, you should love each other. Love for one another will prove to the world that you are my followers. It's love is the proof, okay? And we cling to the truth. Why? Because, well, truth sometimes stinks, right? I mean, sometimes truth stings. Sometimes you don't want to hear the truth, right? Because it hurts. And sometimes it's like just that, that balm that you need to, to heal that wound. It's the thing that brings hope in a desperate situation. You know, you cling to that truth and, and it can calm us down as well and, and 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 but sometimes it exposes stuff we don't want to we don't want to admit to right and so truth's a funny thing but nevertheless Jesus said hey you know I came in the world to speak truth I'm explaining the invisible God and stuff and he says if you listen to me and, and you remain faithful to what I tell you to do okay then you will know the truth and you will discover freedom there you will walk in freedom because you're gonna stand tall because you know you're walking in my ways. And, 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 and Jesus, this one who came into this world, okay, wrapped himself with a towel and washed the feet of others as an act of service. He says, he says we express these values, this, this, this acceptance, this compassion, and the truth by doing practical good things for other people. We serve each other. Because faith, the, whatever you claim, whatever sign you hold up, it doesn't mean anything unless there's some substance backing it. That's the thing that, that proves the point of what you confess. Let's pray together. Father, we just thank you.
for these profound truths, really. This profound truth that, that you so love the world that you gave. That you gave, that you sent your son into this world. And, and he came and made it possible for us to understand. He revealed who you are. And he did this deed. He fixed. He, he applied the fix to this world. Somehow through his death. The penalty that we deserve, he took upon himself. So that just by trusting in what he did, you tell us that we can stand before you, the holy, almighty God. That we will not perish. But that even when this body of ours gives out, that we will live in eternal life. We thank you for that truth. And, and we pray that you teach us how to practice exception, acceptance. How to express real love. How to speak truth in a way that's soothing and, free, and, and produces freedom. And give us practical ways to express these values each and every day. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Even when I don't 
Feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop. 